Hi, greetings. Welcome to the class. This is Kundalini Yoga for Building Magnetic Confidence. This is a fun class. It's an energetic class. It's one for anyone, whether you've been doing Kundalini Yoga for some time or you're brand new. It'll meet you right where you're at. Uh, it's for all different types of people, all shapes and sizes. Uh, it'll really help lift up your energy, bring the mind into greater clarity, give the endocrine system nice balance, good intuition, give the nervous system good strength so that we have that inner core vitality that we need to go through our life with confidence, with a good sense of purpose. When we say magnetic confidence that's a confidence that's coming from a deeper place not superficial confidence but confidence that's coming from the very energy of our being being activated and more embodied and so enjoy the class uh, have a great time check us out life force academy countless other classes in the links below we would love to have you in there enjoy the class building your magnetic confidence Welcome to the event. We're really happy that you're here. We're about to go live in just a few moments, but before we lift off, there's a few important things we want to make sure that you're aware of so you get the best possible experience out of this. First of all, the sound current is supremely important to us, the musical experience, so if possible, we really encourage you to use good speakers or headphones uh, to experience the class with. Second, if you have any pre-existing injuries, please take care of yourself, modify as you need to. Don't risk exacerbating an injury because of a yoga exercise. If you have any pre-existing medical conditions and you're not quite sure if this would be good for you, please consult with your primary health care practitioner and make sure it's the right thing for you. Also. Make yourself relatively comfortable. You can use a cushion. And in fact, we encourage you in our seated positions, meditation practices, to use a cushion. It helps lift the heart up, keep the spine straight. And it's more ideal for the flow of energy in the body and for the meditation experience. You can even be sitting in a chair with feet flat on the floor for those of you that are unable to sit in a meditative sitting posture on the floor just use a chair and for many of the exercises that will work perfectly fine and then lastly if you're having any problems with the video streaming try refreshing the page or if you see a gear icon on the video adjust your resolution if you're new to this type of thing uh, just take care of yourself if there's something that you don't quite understand i wouldn't worry about it too much everything that needs to click will click after a few times of trying it out enjoy the experience we're about to get started in just a moment Okay, greetings. What's up, everybody? It's really nice to be back. Nice to be with everyone this evening. It's been a minute for me, and uh, I'm excited to get started. Uh, it's a nice night to be here. It's always a nice night to be here. It's always a nice time to meditate. There's never a bad time to meditate, because if things are really good, then when you meditate, it really allows you to, to strengthen more of the goodness in your life. And when things are really difficult and challenging and there's a whole bunch of suffering going on in our life, then meditating is excellent because it allows you to access the medicine within that suffering and thus eventually at least alleviate the suffering and not just alleviate the suffering in the sense that the pain is gone, the suffering is gone, but, but when we are, are accessing what I'm calling in this case the medicine inside of our suffering, inside of our challenges, inside of our stress, inside of our anxieties, inside of all of, the, all of it, when we access the medicine as a way of moving through it, then not only does it eventually, does the suffering alleviate, but we've also blossomed out of because we've gone through it we haven't come out on the other side weaker than we went in we've come out of the side 
stronger, and I don't mean physically necessarily stronger, but definitely spiritually stronger, which means our happiness is stronger. The strength of our happiness, the conviction of our confidence, and the confidence that's born from just really being deeply connected to ourselves and being deeply connected to the energy of our of ourselves, which then very naturally and very organically connects us deeply to to others and not just human others, but all life of others, plants and animals and the whole really biosphere even, and just being in awe of the mystery uh, and and the, the wonder of what this all is. And we're in these mysterious bodies, which are really cool and really, really sensitive. That's what's so special about the human organism. If you listen to what the, how the yogis talk about it and when I say yogis, all the great sages from around the world, but particularly how they talk about it in the Indian and, uh, traditions, which there are many, is as this really sensitive instrument. And it's, it's physical, it's mental, we have the electricity of our nervous system, we have the kind of chemical responses of the endocrine system. Isn't that interesting, the endocrine system? has a little more of a subtlety than even the nervous system. The nervous system has this type of electricity that's flowing through it, that right in this moment, somehow my brain is communicating to my musculoskeletal system to make the hands move like this, and it's not a something I'm trying to do, but somehow this whole thing is animated, just the same way you are animated. And, and so... But then when it comes to endocrines, in the, in the nervous system, it's like the wires are all connected, but the endocrines are sending signals through some other more subtle mechanism. I don't think we completely understand the endocrine system yet uh, in, in modern science, but we're beginning to understand it more and more. But I think the yogis very much understood it. In fact, the endocrines are very intim intimately in, intertwined in a certain way, almost simultaneous with the chakra system. And, and I think we'll discover that more and more as we understand the endocrine system more and more, your pituitary gland, the pineal gland, the thymus gland, the, the, the thyroid and parathyroid, etc. But also connected down into the organs of sexuality and elimination and the navel center of where our willpower comes from and our, our get up and go energy our ability to move, our ability to, our ability to make things happen, our ability to get things done. This is the navel chakra. And that, though sometimes these, these, this energy in our system gets uh, a little out of, out of balance or a little too strong or strong in the wrong context. So for instance, if, if my Mars energy, which I have plenty of, if, if it expresses itself in a moment, because Mars energy is fiery and sometimes aggressive, if it expresses it in a moment that requires softness and sensitivity in order for there to be harmony, then that's going to be a, a difficult experience. It's going to create friction, it's going to, to create a disconnection and communications and so forth and so on. But if you put that same Mars energy on the basketball court a couple of times a week, then it does just fine. And it's actually an asset there. And it, you can, it can help, help me have fun. And so the point I want to make here is we are all wired a little differently. And some of us have energy that just has to move. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's exactly how we're designed. Some of us have a more of a wiring where you really kind of need to stimulate more of that movement. Some people have a very energetic Mars. Some people have a, a, a more passive Mars. So if Mars is in a water sign like Cancer, well, then it, it's not as enthusiastic to get up and go as if it's in, say, like a Capricorn or Aries, a, a fire sign or a very active Earth sign. And so we need not know our astrology or horoscope to kind of tune into that for ourselves. And it's like... Where does my energy need a good channel? And what would be a healthy channel for it? 
And where in my life maybe do, do I need to stimulate myself a little bit more? It, maybe there's a, a little more excessive passivity. And it needs a little stimulation to get up and go. So anyhow, when you're working with, for instance, a kundalini yoga exercises like we're doing here this evening, uh, number one, if you, if you do have a, a kind of an energy that needs to be worked out in your body, in your mind, well, it's fantastic for that. But also simultaneously, if you need to stimulate a little bit of that energy, then it's also fantastic for that. So, so while each of us may be doing the same exercises, we all, uh, I encourage that we're all tuning into, all right, where, where is my body at? Where is my mind at right now? And how and what mood and what, what, what type of kind of feel uh, is going to work best for me as we're going through these rhythms, as we're going through these kriyas. Because that's what we're very much endeavoring to do, is to put ourselves inside of some sort of bass rhythm, some sort of, uh, some f- sort of harmonious, harmonic rhythm. And how are we trying to do that? By working with the life force, by working with the chi, by working with the prana. Because what's the bridge between my mind, which is going, 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 and it sometimes is, is projecting positive things, and sometimes it's projecting negative things, sometimes it's projecting confident things, sometimes it's projecting insecure things. The mind is going to do its thing. So if I'm focused on my mind, and if I'm trying to relax my mind by focusing on my mind, that's very difficult because it can take you in sort of this kind of tailspin, and you can never quite catch it. As soon as you figure out one thing, there's something else that then has, has become uh, more important, and that, but also elusive. So the mind is extremely tricky and so multifaceted. The body, there's a gazillion things going on, literally quadrillions of things happening in the body at every moment, and of which we control only one, and that's a voluntary muscle movement. The autonomic nervous system, the subconscious mind, is what is maintaining the rhythm of your heart, is maintaining cellular metabolism, metabolism, all the enzymatic secretions of the digestive systems, and so on and so forth. Literally quadrillions of things happening in the physical body at every moment. And all we can do is take a voluntary muscle movement. So through your nose, inhale. Like really deep. Exhale it. Now, now much deeper, inhale through your nose, like, and then push it out through your nose. Keep your chest held up high, drop your shoulders a little, not a big deal, we're not having to go into some deep meditation, but take a deep breath in now through your nose. Now suspend it for a moment, that's keeping it in, but relax your upper body, soften your heart. You can close your eyes down, exhale. Another time, deep inhale. Suspend the breath in for a moment. Lift up gently through your pelvic floor. Draw your navel just below the belly button up and in. Heart softened, lifted. Chin ever so slightly tucked. Then the gaze draws into the pituitary space, third eye. Exhale. Good, now open your eyes. All we have done is voluntary muscle movements, essentially. So that's kind of an insight into how we can work with the, the kriyas of the yoga practice, meaning that if I put emphasis on the prana, if I put emphasis on the chi, as opposed to being uh, overly intellectual about it, or I can't do the posture totally, you know, maybe I can't do it as well as Megan is able to do it in terms of the, what the posture is ideally supposed to look like. That's less important. When you're focusing on just using these exercises as tools in order to stimulate and center your, your prana, your life force. We're doing that by putting your concentration on the breath, by putting concentration on the rhythm, and then by bringing some sort of uh, uh, a structure or, or uh, a focal, focal point to the mind. And so 
so in w one way we do that is there's always some drishti there. There's always some point of focus where your attention goes, your prana flows, your life force flows. So if you just leave things on kind of autopilot, our attention is going all over the place all the time, and thus that's where our life force also is going. And so we're not saying nothing wrong with that. We're just saying here, for these moments, what we're going to do is recalibrate everything. What we're going to do is say to our mind, okay, relax. We're, gonna, we're going to kind of take, take the reins a little bit. And we take the reins by, by kind of giving a little bit of demand to our concentration ability. So I'm going to say, okay, draw, close your eyes down and see if you can relax your optic gaze, relax the optic nerve to the area, the space, kind of where the, the root of the nose meets the skull bone. The point of the pituitary or ajna chakra, as the yogis call it, the commanding center. And so if you can just simply relax your awareness there, not trying to see a third eye, not trying to see anything in particularly. There's not an aspiration that has any specificity. Instead, we're relaxing our concentration so that the, the magnetism, the prana of the body, and prana is magnetism, centers itself, and thus the mind will come into a relaxation, and the mind will then come into a blissfulness. The glandular systems will start to secrete. The pituitary, or the third eye point, they call the commanding center, the master gland. And the word ajna, the Sanskrit term for the sixth chakra, ajna literally means command. And so what it's inferring is that this pituitary, and we know this, it works as a master gland for the endocrines, the guardians of your health, your endocrine system. And so if you can bring a healthy kind of energy into that frontal lobe of the brain, you can put it into neuro neurology, the reptilian back part of your brain is more of where animalistic uh, fight or flight tendencies are coming from. Uh, more of our wisdom, more of our emotional maturation is coming, coming from the frontal lobe. So when you're bringing more, you're relaxing more of your attention and your awareness into that general space while simultaneously we're doing the Kriya, we're doing the exercise, or <laughs> we're creating a rhythm. <laughs> and we're not tr trying to grip it there, we're not excessively trying to look at it. We're just in a, in a somewhat relaxed way over time. Every, all of this takes practice. Don't say, don't say I'm not good at it. There's no one is good or bad. It's, it's just, if, you, if it resonates, if you like it, the more you do it, the easier it becomes, the more it's like, ah, that's, that's what this is all about. So you're... And then inhale. And, we, and then suspension of the breath for a moment. Pelvic floor lifts up. And exhale. I'm, we'll, I'll walk you through it all. I'm just using it as a, a general example of the process that we're gonna, we want to be working with and going through through pretty much every exercise meditation we do here. So when you're, we're in the exercise, when they're in, in, engaged in the activity of it, it's stimulating your life force. It's circulating the life force. And we're helping it by helping it by endeavoring to relax our concentration into that third eye space. Naturally, when you start to stimulate your prana, it triggers the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind will, will at some point start to react. And then it feels like we're meditating less than even when we started. We're actually more agitated. We're, we're feeling uh, uh, mo more neurotic at times. For all of us, that, that eventually happens. No big deal. Let it happen. Let ourselves feel that way. The idea here is, 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 let me say it differently, feeling good while you're doing this in terms of that type of thing and mental, emotional activity, ability to concentrate. Feeling good is not necessarily, uh, or let me say feeling bad is not indicative that you're not doing it really well. Because you can be doing any type of meditation practice really well. And what's going to happen? It's expanding the field of our awareness. Magnetism is strengthening. 
And so you're very, very, in a very literal way, although may, albeit subtle, you are brightening. And that has so much benefit. Feel better, look better. You're going to have a, a type of you know, inner confidence that comes from just good centered magnetism. But on the way through that process, that means then I'm also going to learn stuff about my mental uh, tendencies, emotional tendencies that are going to be difficult to look at and they're not going to feel good. And so as we're doing this type of work, it's all so, so important, I think, uh, to, to have a great deal of compassion for your own mind and body and your own predicament and be, and be uh, loving with yourself. This isn't some purification thing we're trying to fix ourselves. This is about getting into the deeper substance of what and who we are and finding the joy and the love and the creativity and the purpose there. But to get there, sometimes there's some, some difficult passes to traverse. So we just relax into it. And, and things just tend to kind of settle just in the right place. But sometimes it, you feel tender. And sometimes you'll feel, feel just loads of joy. Sometimes you'll feel sad. All of that is most welcome. Because all of that energy, emotional energy, is an expression of love. Energy in motion, all the emotions, energy in motions, on their way to becoming love. And the more we're able to really feel what we're feeling, the more that energy of emotion will metabolize into a loving, a loving space, a loving state. And kundalini yoga exercises are fantastic for helping to facilitate that process. But I think maybe it's, we want to think of it that way sometimes instead of something that's just always going to fix my problem. No, it's going to allow us to realize we don't have a problem is that, that what we have is, is the, the glorious, precious human existence in an incredible being that we all are. And, and that's deep self-love, to recognize, to, to experience ourselves as these kind of instruments of love, and not in some cheesy, cliche, new age phrasing, but really in a, a visceral experience of experiencing that ourse ourselves like that. And, and, and through that experience, it gives you the wisdom to know that everyone is that. Everything is that. And so that is deep interconnectivity. And so then the same compassion I'm feeling for my own predicament, I'm going to feel it for yours. And that's love. And I know if I'm experiencing brilliance in some way, that's coming coming through my life, I know that brilliance is also coming through your life in some way that's unique for you. And so that's love. And so the more we can kind of keep the psyche tuned to that radio wavelength, uh, the more of not it's, not, it's not positive, it's not negative, it's in the between, it's, it's getting into the love wavelength of the, the intelligence wavelength but not human intelligence the intelligence that is kind of animating this whole this whole universe what is that intelligence keeping ourselves attuned to that then whatever it is we have to do in our lives we're going to do it well we will because we'll have the happiness we'll have the creativity and we'll have the emotional maturity to suffer well when we must suffer because we all must that's part of what we are here to do and out of that suffering comes deep, deep love. Until there, that, that's it. The medicine is in it. Enough. You ready? Let's tune in and let's get started. Okay, make a little warmth of your hands. All right, inhale deeply, please. Exhale. Guru Deep Nair 
fantastic. Come on to the hands and knees. Okay, now start cat cow. Inhaling the head is coming up, exhaling the head is coming down. Through the nose and go at your own pace. You see, the pelvic floor is lifted a touch. And that'll protect the low back and keep you from overextending on the inhalation. And then even more importantly, as, as you're practicing, if almost always there's a gentle engagement of the pelvic floor, it gives you a foundation that then when you're moving the breath, you can really move and work with the prana. So it's just your focal point, which gives you your structure to move energy through, is the sound of the breath, and as much as you can, relaxing the gaze into that third eye space. But also feel the body. Open the fingers wide, press into the earth. Feel the way the legs from the knees down through the shins and the tops of the feet feel against the ground. And gently press into the earth through the palms as you continue. And the breath will, as you go, it's a three minute thing, as the breath as you go, will start to get deeper and you'll start to really enjoy it. And go your own pace, whatever pace feels nice for your, you and your body and mind. And keep going. organ up and in. Relax the gaze, third eye space. And then exhale, head is down. Push all the breath out. Arch the spine up. Tuck the pelvis under. Push all the breath out. Push it out more. And then draw your navel up and towards your spine. Lift through the pelvic floor. Uh, fantastic. And come sitting up on the heels. Okay, so the hands will be on the lap, chest will be lifted, yeah? And then as you inhale, it's like a lifting through your sternum. Sit bones press down, so make sure you're right on your sit bones. Sit bones press down as the sternum lifts, chin is slightly in. Hands are on the lap, arms relaxed by the rib cage. And then you, you work with the rhythm like Forward on the inhale, exhaling back. Through the nose, the breath. It's not a really long breath, but it's a rhythmic and strong breath. It's substantively rhythmic, right? Really lift through your sternum. Beautiful. It's great. Now for the next minute or so, just go deep into it. Enjoy.
Now suspension of the breath. Keep the breath in. Now relax the upper body. Lift through the mulvan, rectum, sex organ, navel, pelvic floor up and in, navel draws up and in. Relax the gaze, third eye, soften the chest. And exhale. Good, come back, easy pose, cross-legged. That's how you center the prana, concentrate the life force. Throughout the exercise, stimulating, circulating, forward, back, left, right, in, out, feminine, masculine, up, down, it said dark, light. Then at the end of each of the exercise, inhale deep, suspension, put the root lock in place, and draw the gaze third eye, then it's just softening of the heart and spaciousness. Spaciousness of mind, spaciousness of energy. Not intending for anything in particular to happen. It's just creating nice space. Then exhale. Move on to the next thing. Hands here. Inhale. First lift pelvic floor. Then inhale left. Exhale right. Preliminary exercises to open the channels, to bring good vitality into the body tissues, to concentrate the prana so the mind relaxes and opens. And then we can really journey together. center, inhale very deeply, suspension of the breath, lift through the pelvic floor, soften the heart, meditating the third eye, exhale, I won't say it, guide it like that every time, but you know, generally speaking, you keep on doing that, building the concentrated energy reservoir, hands on the knees, Gonna inhale up, exhale, release. Right. But you can go like. Lift up through the pelvic floor as you continue. breath really deep within the rhythm the breath is powerful yet the face is relaxed and every exhale just let the shoulder blades release down the back release the tension neck upper back shoulder Good Mars energy to open, to move the prana, to lift, to lift your vibe and lift your joyful creativity. And do that with your very breath, encouraging your very life force with positive energy. squeeze up and squeeze out the tension and exhale release 
Stretch the legs wide open and flex the feet. Make sure you're on your sit bones. You can use a cushion if, you, if that helps. If you don't need it, that's great too. Inhale, center. Energy into your toes. Feet are flexed, energy in the toes. Inhale, center, turn to either side, then fold, exhale, down from the navel area. Then as you lift, lift through your chest. As you exhale, fold from the navel area. Lead with the heart. And then as you inhale, use the strength of the leg on that side of the body to help lift you. And every inhale, fill your lungs and open your heart. legs a little bit wider and then continue and make every breath count it's for a limited period of time we're working with ourselves our body and mind and breath like this see if you can give it full presence beautiful part of that is all the other things that are demanding and asking for attention in our life will benefit when we give full presence to our own life energy, nurture ourselves, recalibrate, keep track of our joy, keep track of our vitality, our sense of happiness. Come on, inhale up center, then hinge forward, lift through the heart tuck through the chin and then relax down into the position keep the feet flexed toes engaged now tuck the chin extend out through the heart drop the shoulders and make your breath long slow and deep as you inhale feel like you're drawing the prana into the bowl of the pelvis nurturing the lower glands and the pelvic bowl and as the exhale comes, that prana lifts up, passes through the heart center and into the bowl of the skull, nurturing the cerebral glands in the higher centers of the body. And then the inhale back into the bowl of the pelvis. And as you exhale up into the skull, into the crown, few more cycles of this. It's a deep breath. It takes full concentration. You just use your creativity. There's no one way to do it. You do it by doing it. Your imagination, your imagery put that imagination with your breath and with the meditative gaze of the third eye and thus you learn to be more of a master of your own domain and relax shake your legs out a little bit good come standing Index finger to your thumb, palms will be facing forward. Gyan Mudra, the wisdom seal, when you bring great Jupiter, at this moment it's conjunct the moon, and by the way, it's cause for celebration because only in this last week, what are you laughing at? <laughs> by the way, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> the, uh, 
in the last days, uh, Jupiter has uh, entered into Aquarius in, the, in its final transit out of Capricorn, which we've been dealing with for a couple years, all through this challenging time. And Capricorn is Jupiter's position in the sky of debilitation. So the Guru, wisdom, was debilitated from on a planetary level. And so it's always cause for celebration when he goes into Aquarius finally with no more transits back in retrogrades back into Capricorn because it's not going to be another 12 years until Jupiter will go back into that point of so-called debilitation. So that's right now and then it's like the moon is there to celebrate. And when the moon and Jupiter come together, which they are at this moment, it's always indicative of good fortune. It's always a time to amplify the goodness of our life, the prosperity of our life. So, index finger to your thumb strengthens your Jupiter energy. And then you're going to be inhaling up, exhaling down like this. Sut, na, sut, na, sut, na. Getting the knees up to hip level. Using the arms. Move the lymphatics. With the deep rhythmic breath. the lymphatic nodes in the armpit upper chest area use the arms as well use the breath that's how the lymph moves breath body over 80 percent of your immune system in the lymphatic system seconds inhale stretch up exhale release very nice. Shake your legs out a little bit. If you want some water, have some water. And then you're going to come with your legs stretched out and then the arms straight out like that one, Megan. Yeah. And so she makes her legs engage strong. This is, it looks like a, a exercise where we're working on our flexibility. And yeah, a little bit, but definitely more so we're working on core strength. We're working on core vitality, both on the physical level, but also on the mental, energetic level. So this is one thing I want us to be working on tonight, is, is uh, learning how to use the asset of your navel, learning how to use the asset of your core energy. 
in order to, for everything else to benefit. That works on every facet of life, whether it's physical, you have better core strength, every athlete knows you'll have less vulnerability to injury. On the pranic level, when you have good use of the core energy, you can really move your life force. You have good, deep, strong foundation to then, then consciously move your energy, work with your breath. You'll be able to respirate better because with the lifting of your pelvic floor, you're going to be able to move your diaphragm better. Good foundation. If it's weak down here, this, the posture is going to be more slouchy. Then there's more gravity that's kind of working on you on various levels, and it causes us to age more quickly. If you can keep the heart lifted, keep the shoulders back, you can, can keep to maintain and even grow your youthfulness. Okay, so anyhow, arms are out, fingers are firm, legs are engaged. You're inhaling here and exhaling down, as, she, and well, as Megan is. And then she's using her core strength to lift on the inhalation. And perfect, just like that. And every inhale is deep, filling the lungs. And you exhale on the way down. If you can't get up, if you don't have the, your body doesn't allow you to do it in that full expression like Megan is there, then you just, you come down to where you can, but the key is to keep your chest lifted, not collapsing the chest in the name of trying to touch your toes. Because who gives a crap about touching you, your toes? We give more interest into core vitality. So if you, have to, if you keep your heart lifted, your chest lifted, you will be forced to use your core strength to lift you on the inhalation. That's how you develop uh, progress in asana practice. Not flexibility, great, but it will only take you so far. When you combine flexibility and strength together, this is when you're generating magnetism. Inhale center, suspension, and relax. Bueno. Good. Come sitting in easy pose. Your hands will be Gyana Mudra, index finger to your thumb. Chest is lifted. So I want us to work with breath of fire creating the, the key of this pranayama, and it never gets old to learn it in this way. It's not like I know breath of fire. Breath of fire always gets deeper if you work with it like this, by instead of, of just going through the motions and the mechanics of the, of the practice, you're going m more deeply into your own rhythm, into your own feel, into your own sound. And so how we do that is create an equalization of the exhale and the inhale. So. Uh, Take some practice at first, like it, but if you inhale first, then. Now, now to learn it, you can focus on your exhale, like this. Just focus on your exhale to learn it. But then once you start to get the hang of it, then equalize your exhale and inhale because the tendency is more exhale strength than inhale. And we want neutralization of the prana, which causes neutralization of the psyche, which causes us to be more emotionally happy, more emotionally stable. So, try this. Stick out the tongue, and like our dogs do this, to cool off, they go. <laughs> Open your chest. <laughs> really do it. Work. This pranayam stimulates your immune system really well. Panting. <laughs> Good. 
10 seconds. Now keep going, but close the mouth through the nose. Now it's gonna have some punch. And yet your mind is relaxed, heart is soft, but the breath rhythm, it has punch, it has a pocket. Just work towards it. And then just use it to uplift your energy. Concentrate third eye space, softening, opening the hearts, and brightening your whole mind, being, body. pelvic floor, draw your navel in, spacious, exhale, fantastic, come onto your backs, so when you put the mantra onto it, now you're really giving your mind a sound current. Vibrational frequencies, mantras, that help to create happy, positive energy, help to purify sub old, non-useful subconscious patterns, tendencies. But the sound of the breath is also a mantra. Feet together, you'll take a deep inhale and fully exhale. Now, in a moment, we'll come stretch pose. Megan and show us stretch pose. We'll inhale into it. Toes pointed. Lift through the chest. Breath of fire. And the core will have to be lifted up to keep the heart. Now, if you if it's straining your low back, hands underneath your butt. Okay. Thank you, Megan. Okay. Relax, and then we'll do it together. Inhale deeply. Fully exhale. Come into the stretch pose. Inhale deepest. Powerfully move the navel. Lift up through the pelvic floor, and then with the breath rhythm, move the navel. Deep inhale. Root lock is in rectum, sex organ up and in, now navel deeply in. So it shakes it deep, deeper please, deeper, relax. Really relax, relax for a few moments. Let your arms out a little bit, let your legs out some, relax. Now 
hug the knees to the chest, please. And bring the nose up to, to the knees or towards the knees. And relax your shoulder blades down, otherwise squeeze up tight. And take a deep inhale in. And breath of fire. Use the navel. Balancing and stimulating the digestive agni, digestive fire, and lower digestive organs. Siddhavata. Squeeze up tight. Exhale, release. And hug the knees back to the chest. Rock and roll several times. Rocking forward up onto your sit bones. Rocking back onto the spine. Massaging the spine as you rock back. Rocking up onto the sit bones. And rocking back through the spine. Use the breath. Every breath counts. Inhale, come on up. And then you come to you come to easy pose. And you bring your arms up to 60 degrees. Your fingers are tucked in, your thumbs are out, like that. Then the arms come up 60 degrees. Chest lifted on the sit bones, shoulder blades released. Relax the eyes close, gaze of the third eye. Inhale very deeply. And then finally, last one for three minutes. And breath of five. Charge it, the aura. It's, it's balancing your magnetism. Everyone has a magnetism. Every living thing has magnetism. And every magnet has two poles. And you have one pole at the base of your spine. And one pole at the crown of the head. And just above the crown of the head. And your magnetism flows through the spine. Through all of the glands. All through the nervous system and the chakras. Between those two poles. And when the life force becomes stagnated, our magnetism suffers and it's more difficult for us to maintain a cheerful spirit and a happy purpose-driven mind and heart. But if we keep our magnetism strong and balanced by concentration and circulation with the life force, chi, and nurturing the body and the mind in such a way, these kriyas, if you hold this for three minutes at the 60 degree angle with the rhythm of the breath of five and the mental gaze third eye, just even some of the time, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to have a positive effect. It's going to circulate the prana from below your diaphragm, lower triangle, up into the heart, to the thyroid, parathyroid, pituitary, pineal. And then the lower centers of our sense of security, of our sense of creativity and sexuality, of our sense of willpower and drive. They'll be guided by the spirit of happiness, the spirit of dharma, the, sp the spirit of creativity. We can very much trust ourselves from that space to do the right thing for us 
to follow our hearts, to not need anyone outside of ourselves for dependency. Sovereign beings, majestic and beautiful just as we are, and yet profoundly interwoven with all living things. Breath of five. Thumb tips coming together, fingers spread open wide. Release the shoulder blades, touch the ceiling with your fingertips, lift up pelvic floor, and gaze in the third eye space. Hold the position here, exhale. And good, now very deeply inhale. Stretch up, release the shoulders. Hold the position, exhale. And then inhale deep. Stretch through the spine, pelvic floor lift, third eye gaze, and relax, sweep through the arms, enjoy your magnetism. Isn't that fantastic? To be, a, we haven't done much, you know? And you can bring ourselves to like, ah, let me enjoy my life, enjoy, wow. Even with all its complications, even with all its heartaches and, and, and aspirations too. Disappointments and aspirations, two sides of the same coin. So do you know that faith, I was reading in, from Dugo Kensei Rinpoche right before we started, and he said the etymology for the word faith is like a desire for aspiration, towards an aspiration. That's interesting, huh? They have a really great way, these Tibetan Buddhists, of understanding these concepts, and they have three levels of faith, a yearning faith, I can't remember, vivid faith. Yearning is where it's just like, you long, you ha you're following your heart's call, you can feel you know, what it is you're pursuing or wishing to experience, you can feel it, and that's the feeling of love. And that gives you a type of uh, desire towards aspiration, and it's a type of faith. But then you get to vivid faith where it's now it's not based on this kind of sense of something, but there's some substantive experience there. So if you were trying to have faith, say, in like any sort of practice, or faith in any sort of kind of, you know, way of, of enriching ourselves, well, it's very important, first of all, uh, to not practice blind faith. That we're just, it seems philosophically sound. So... So, or we, we're kind of magnetized towards it, or just because that someone seems to know what they're talking about, but that we, we practice discernment, and we make sure, does this resonate with me? Does this work for me? Maybe it works for someone else, but not for me. And, but, but then, when faith kicks in, you get a little bit of experience in, wow, this is helping me be more of myself. This is helping me have less anxiousness. This is ha helping me have less depression. I'm not talking about faith in some religion. I don't con really ever contextualize anything within a religious context, because that's not how I operate in my own mind. Some people do, and that works beautifully for them. And I, and I enjoy some of that. But personally for me, uh, this is not religious at all. This is a courtship of love, courtship of happiness. And, and so, but then it becomes, uh, the third type of faith is where, where there's zero doubt whatsoever. And they, and they talk about that in the, in the Buddhist texts of this is, this is, you know this when you would easily, without even any sense of doubt, give your life for that, whatever that is. That's just to demonstrate how deep that conviction is. So that's coming from some other place. And but all of this is, all of these are just little, you know, signposts to kind of consider, not to grip on 
teachings in my opinion and being dogmatic about them but it's considerations and then we test it within ourselves okay we're gonna this kriya that we're about to do you'll be sitting in in this cross-legged position for all the exercises so if you want to stretch your legs do so uh, if you want to have some water now is an excellent time to do that and in all three of these exercises Your, your eye focus, drishti, is tip of your nose. So you can look at your index finger, touch the tip of your nose, there it is. It takes some practice. <clears throat> the breath in all three of these exercises is also the same. You have an O-shaped mouth. And the tongue is not out, but it's kind of a breath like that where it's coming from your chest. So it's like this. <laughs> O-shaped puckered mouth. And then the breath comes from the chest. It's not the like a cannon breath where it's coming from your cheeks. It comes navel and chest. Deeper down. Takes a little practice. So tip of the nose gaze and then the breath. Try it. Okay. So now you're gonna put the body into it. If it becomes overwhelming for you at any point, and like, whoa, lightheaded, just please relax, okay? There's no need to push it. It's gonna do just what it needs to do by you trusting your body. Your hands are out like this. They're gonna, when they twist towards you, they close into fists. When they twist away from you, they open up. So go, uh, You can twist them like that. Like. And then just do your best. It's very difficult to do this well and keep your concentration. Tip of the nose. Keep going, Megan. We're in it. I'm um, sorry, unless you stop because you were lightheaded. Everybody keep going. <laughs> I'll keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Tip of the nose. Give it a minute or so to find your rhythm. You'll find it. You concentrate the gaze, tip of the nose. That'll put the little bit of pressure on the pituitary. Equal and opposite pressure, tip of the nose, frontal lobe. With the breath rhythm, that will give power to the brain. That will start to concentrate the life force. And that opening of the wrist opens the important meridians to get the prana to flow through the heart channels. It's fantastic. Give it a try. seconds give it a try tip of the nose if you're unable to keep the movement or the breath see if you can still keep your gaze tip of the nose and maintain the meditative space and make a long deep breath that will also work beautifully well from the chest the breath It might make you cough a little. Fine. It doesn't. It's not aggressive breath, but it is. A, you have to give it something. It might be difficult on the wrists. Do your best. the mouth deepest inhale 
Make your fists, hands in your fists. Now lift the mulban, pelvic floor. Now tighten your spine and your fists, your arms, your chest, your whole fabric of your body. Tighten and distribute the prana, energy. Then like a cannon through your mouth, exhale. Again, inhale deep. Lift the mulban, tighten the fist, squeeze the body deep, squeeze deep, concentrate the energy. Exhale. Inhale. Lift the mulban, tighten the spine, squeeze the fist. Exhale. Amazing. Relax. Shake your arms out. Just kind of distribute the energy a little bit. Good. Have a little sip of water. Okay, but remember, I want us to work with our navels even here. It feels like you're only using the arms with these. Your, your power point is your navel. So here's the next. I want you to worry less about going fast and more about going deep with your navel. So, so as you, you should feel like you're actually, at least energetically, pushing something away from you. <laughs> Lead with the heel of the palm, tip of the nose gaze. It's not just the arms, it's a spinal twist in there. Moving the cerebrospinal fluid, opening the heart. But like a martial artist who could break like a stack of bricks with very seemingly little effort, it's because he uses his chi, his prana. We're not interested in breaking the bricks, but we are interested in breaking through sort of stagnation and, 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 and obstacles that are being stubborn in our life. Inner emotional mental patterns, even sometimes external circumstances. Lead with the heel. Remember, chest breath, O-shaped mouth. <laughs> Try the tip of the nose. Tune into your life. What would we want to amplify and, and expand our aspirations? What would we love to overcome? You can move your energy, you can move your life. It should be like a dance, now go. Tighten the body. Make your fingers like lion's claws. Exhale. Switch, inhale. Tighten, tighten. Make the fingers like lion's claws. Tighten the spine. Exhale. Switch the other one. Last one. Tighten, tighten. Exhale. Fantastic. Amazing. Last exercise, then we'll really lay down for several minutes. So, this one I love. Same breath, same gaze. Arms are out by your sides, elbows bent, fingers not touching but not tight. Heart wide open. 
This one all about your heart prana. Chest lifted, chin is slightly in, sit bones connected, tip of the nose gaze. And like this. Not about speed, it's about depth. Depth of prana. Make sure your pelvic floor is lifted. That gives you capacity for depth. And then chest breath, puckered mouth. Concentrate now, go deep into it. Primal rhythm. Everything. Fingers tight, now stretch your tongue maximum. Stretch your tongue all the way out, don't be shy, pull it. It'll pull the nervous, central nervous system. Fingers tight, spine tight, pelvic floor lifted. Stretch your tongue all the way. Exhale. Good, inhale deep. The tongue's so sensitive, stretch it out. Because it's deeply intertwined with the Kundalini, central nervous system. Exhale. Inhale, stretch your tongue out, lift the root lock, squeeze the body and the fingers tight. Exhale, relax, oh my goodness. Take your arms up like this, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them. Make your way onto your backs, relax. Relax, relax. Take a moment. Relax your mind. Let the body relax. Let your arms out. Let the chest soften. Relax. Let the body just kind of feel like it's melting down into the earth. Your magnetic field is being nurtured. Your body and mind and tissues and blood all your organs being nurtured by the very organic, always present, nurturing energy of Mother Earth. You don't need to be on the grass and the trees to be nurtured by Mother Earth. Prakirti, the one who wishes to become many, the great feminine field of reality, the ever-present nurturing that which grew us in our mother's wombs, that which turned her blood into milk. Relax your jaw and your tongue. Just relax.
exhale. Move the fingers and toes a touch. Rotate the wrists, rotate the ankles. Rub the palms, make some heat. Rub the soles of the feet, make some heat. And cat stretch. out like so and your the rest of your fingers closed in like fists and press the thumb tips together so they turn a little bit white just like that then you hold the mudra the position it's called meditation on the white swan you're gonna the key is again pelvic floor if you don't have the pelvic floor lifted, there'll be more tension in the upper body, more difficult. Pelvic floor, heart lifted, shoulder blades released. And then you hold it at the height of the third eye. And what you do is, for a few moments, you look at the shape of the thumbs, you look at the image of the thumbs in front of you, meditatively. And then you close your eyes and you see the, see the image the shape with the eyes closed. Begin to breathe long, slow, and deep, keeping the chest lifted, chin is in, shoulder blades release, hands not too high up, just in front of the brow point or just below it. two points of focus is endeavoring to maintain the image of the thumbs and then even more importantly maintain concentration on a long deep and complete breath Endeavor to keep the body perfectly steady, like an antenna, or like an instrument. And move the breath long and deep. The more difficult it becomes, make the breath that much deeper. shape of the thumbs as you dwell in the beautiful space of the third eye. Blissful and the heart is soft.
say it on the image of the thumb shape. Meditation on the white swan. Keep the shoulder blades released, chest down. Breathe very deep. You hit a threshold where you don't feel like you can keep going. At that moment, deepen the breathing. Renew your concentration. Prana will lift. A new, deeper reservoir of vitality, spirit, creativity. You can tap that. It's steady, spacious, like an emptied vessel. Breathe. position fully exhale inhale suspend the breath lift the pelvic floor meditate third eye and be perfectly still spacious radiant expansive connected hold the position exhale deepest inhale release the shoulders heart Brilliant, open, pelvic floor lifted, spacious, empty. Hold the position, exhale. Last time, deeply please inhale. To a meditative space, relax. Relax the arms and just with a lifted heart, let the breath flow, let the mind be free. there is suffering may that pain be alleviated may that thirst be quenched and wherever there is happiness may that cup overflow
Right, we did it. Uh, I hope you're feeling fantastic. I hope you loved the experience. Uh, thank you so much for doing it, for finding us here and uh, being a part of it. I want to encourage you to check out the Life Force Academy. Links in the description here. If you love this and if you love the vibe, you will love the Life Force Academy. Uh, it's just a dollar to become a member for your 14 day trial, and it's only $25 a month after that. And there's countless classes. We're doing live streams. Uh, from this studio all the time. Uh, it's an amazing community with members in over 60 countries around the world. And most of all, it's a great academy for really being able to connect into kundalini yoga practices, but really just connect in to have good tools to keep our energy vital, to keep our minds happy, to keep our hearts open, uh, to keep connected to the deeper purpose. We're all here living. So I invite you to check it out, Life Force Academy. Thanks so much and hope to see you in there. But you're wired somehow. Like you have a certain you have a certain way of existing that is absolutely natural and skillful for you. It's, it's you're talented in that way. It's how your heart expresses itself. It's how you get inside of love and how love expresses itself uniquely through you. If you have a mind, you have a mission. If you have a mind, you have a mission. If you have a mind, you have a mission. Hey, thanks for watching on YouTube. Best easy way to stay in touch with us, hit the subscribe button here. You'll see our videos when they come up. If you enjoyed this one, hit the like button. It'll help more people see it, help the channel grow. Appreciate you watching.